I'm Tyler Edlin. I'm back with another episode of the Brush Sauce Theater. I'm very lucky uh, today. I have a special guest, Rowena Frenzel, all the way from Germany, and she's a freelance and a full-time working artist. Hey guys! Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. We're gonna we're gonna be taking a look at some of your work. I'm gonna ask you some questions, and then hopefully I can get a few tips out of you as well. <laughs> that sounds good. So what immediately drew, I think I was drawn to your work was I followed you on Instagram, which I think you're you're probably the most known for. You have nearly twenty three thousand followers already, and you post you try to post every day. You were telling me, and I think that's just fabulous. Mm -hmm. I try to be as much productive as I can. <laughs> and you have a real passion, it seems, for creature design. And I've never had a creature kind of design specialist or somebody as passionate about it kind of at your level. So I thought it would just be great today to have you uh, come on and talk to us about this passion. So how did you get into it? What, what, what instantly kind of drew, where, where did you know you were going to be like, you're going to be the creature artist? Um, well, I think it started as a kid, like every other artist. Um, I was really excited about creatures in general. I had f three cats at home all the time. <laughs> so um, they're so adorable. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm most an introverted and shy person. So I can't really connect with people so good. So animals were always the, the creatures I'm into. So... I think that's why my passion come from. And you do, uh, it seems like you're extremely versatile in both 2D and 3D uh, techniques. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, I started with 2D drawings mm -hmm. um, as a kid, like anime stuff, you know, simple things. Um, but I stopped it because, I mean, teenager years, you know. Yes, yes. I think <laughs> and, we've all uh, gone through some sort of phase in that. I think when I was in middle and high school, I only did fan art for my favorite video game characters. And that mm -hmm. was the extent of anything artistically that I would even bother to do. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So um, there, then I switched to 3D because I'm a super nerdy gamer, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I always wanted to work in the game industry. So, yeah, I switched to 3D, but my love is still in 2D drawings. So, yeah. I can relate to that. I, 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 I pick up a few 3D techniques here and there, but um, if I had my choice, it's always to go back to the, the drawing and the painting. Mostly the painting. I'm not even that great at drawing, but I, I definitely like to paint. Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, um, digital stuff is really cool, but to do it traditional, it's it's such a different level, you know. I see you post often these these sketchbook spreads. Uh -huh. Now, is this something you would typically do in one evening, or do you kind of pick at it over the course of a day or a week? How how does that work out for you? Um, I try to draw every day because I want to improve it, and that's what everybody should do to take mm -hmm. a sketchbook with you and um, just draw when you are in a train or when you have lunch. Um, and yeah, typically I draw at lunch. Mm -hmm. um, at my work um, and when I come home um, so just when I have time you know you f you work it into your schedule you make it it seems like you you make it happen you don't make an yeah. excuse to not yeah draw. I I try to do one one page a day that's that's my it seems like my a goal. very awesome kind of quota to hit and to push for you know goal wise so that way how, how many how many of these sketchbooks do you have filled up laying around your studio or your room? Do you have like piles of them? Uh, oh no, I um I think I have only three, three now because mm -hmm. in the past I only drew on on loose papers, <laughs> and I don't really know if I have all of them. <laughs> but uh, I switched to sketchbook there. In folders so under your bed, right? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> So how I see a lot of these start at the, this kind of sketch and ideation phase, you know, in regards to design. How many how many of these do you would say ever make it to like some kind of finish, or or, or do you bother rendering? Uh, well, at the moment I try to focus on shapes. This mm -hmm. is why most of them are on the on the um, side view. Yes. So. Um, yeah, I tried to, to do this. The sketches are more like to be creative, to get the creative flowing. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's just rough sketches. I don't really finish them most of the time. It's just how you see it there. 
Yeah, I um, think, some, sometimes I, think that's the I way to do it. Yeah, sometimes I try to to do it into 3D, but I don't have so much time. I wish I had, but uh, yeah. So you free sculpt them as well in 3D, like like you were sketching, like a 3D sketch. Yeah. So, yeah. Like a sculpt. Now, what what is your preferred software for the 2D and the 3D? Obviously, we can see you're immensely talented with like a ballpoint pen and pencil. But if you're going to draw digitally, what do you, what do you prefer to work with? Uh, I think Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Photoshop and a graphic tablet. I mean, it's pretty hard to do um, a drawing with only a mouse. Yes, yes, <laughs> so, it is. Uh, I mean, I saw people who do that, and they're really good. Yes, um, they're good, and they're crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, there are crazy people out there. But, uh, yeah, graphic tablet and Photoshop most of the time. And on your 3D side? Um, I love ZBrush. I'm really into this. I... Um, I start with a sphere, a simple mm-hmm. sphere, and just pull and push and just try to make shapes. Have you ever recorded? You have, do you have enough? Do you have a YouTube channel? Where you've ever recorded any of this, or have you made like video uh, time lapses, put them on your Instagram or anything? Have, is there any archival footage of you working like this? <laughs> well, I I plan this in the in the future. Please do. Um, yeah, but not not now. I only have the speed <laughs> sculpts from one minute on my mm-hmm. Instagram. So, but I, but I really try to plan this. If you were, if <laughs> you could make a killing probably in the, in the gum road and the YouTube field doing like <laughs> r- little time lapses of these, all these creatures, people eat that stuff up. I see it. I mean, they're obviously eating it up on your Instagram as well. Oh yeah. People they love, love the speed scouts. Yes. Yeah. People love this sort of thing. I mean, me too. Um, honestly, I love to watch, um, work in progress stuff mm-hmm. or rough um, drawings instead of finished pieces. I don't know why, but do I you, really love it. Do you find that, you, that helps you a lot out on Instagram when you, if you post leading up to like a finished scene, if you show a lot of work in progress, kind of like, I guess this one we're looking at here. Yeah. I mean, you can see on my, on my Instagram account that mm-hmm. I post more uh, whips and more rough stuff um, because I want to show the people that not everything is perfect um, because most of the artists I see only only show the finished polished Polished. stuff and I think that's so wrong because there are 90% of of ugly creepy um, stuff we do (laughs) and I think you must be honest enough to show this and that's not a problem I suck a lot at some drawings or whatever but um, I think it's important to show other people, especially for beginners, um, that my stuff looks creepy too, you know? <laughs> I think that's a misconception a lot of people have, is that we we go to a, a website, right, like it's ArtStation, which is generally a platform a lot of people just like to post portfolio level finished mm-hmm. things, and we see all these beautiful works, right, hundreds of them, time after time, like, okay, they're just that good all the time, but we we don't really often look behind the artist like we don't know does this person have five years experience do they have 15 years of experience are they working with a whole art team to develop that image they push you know how many people were involved if if any at all in the creation of this how how many people did they go and get feedback to push that design you know two steps further than they may have would have on their own there's often just it's like that that surface level you know with like an iceberg how like you know 75 percent of an iceberg is like underwater and we just see the tip i think there's like a comparison there that we can make with looking at finished art you know there's a lot more that goes behind you know behind it behind the scenes that we often don't think about or even consider we're just like oh that's really really good i'm not going to get on that level Oh yeah, that that's true. I I told myself that all the time. Like, oh my gosh, he's so good. Mm-hmm. I will never reach that level. And um, this is why I really try to show the people the behind the scenes stuff, um, especially for my for my drawings um, or for the speed sculpts. Mm-hmm. Um, they see it looks really ugly in the beginning, but it can look better when you work more on it. And um, sometimes I try to. Um, write down what I did or what I struggled with. So people like that. You can work You can work through it. And as I work with a lot of students, uh, both in class and privately. And the, the students that excel the best are the ones that are taking a lot of notes 
and asking a lot of questions. I could sit down with somebody, as I often do, for a two-hour session, and when I just get mm-hmm, mm-hmm for two hours straight, <laughs> I get, like, I'm like, okay, I could take that for what it is, but it's also in the back of my head, it's like, maybe perhaps you should have asked me a little bit more questions and that would have kind of, you would have got more out of me. And mm-hmm. it's those students that, that sit there and challenge me as much as I challenge them that, that they end up growing usually faster as a result. Cause they're, mm-hmm. they're not just working, right? They're not making, as you kind of mentioned, you're not making marks for the sake of making marks, but you're like consciously making that effort to like, okay, what is working and not working about this? And what can I do to, you know, taking a step aside or, or removing yourself from your creation like okay and looking at it objectively to be like okay what is wrong with this how can i make it look you know more successful Mm -hmm. so giving advice all the time and uh giving critique constructive critique is really really good and you should ask um a lot people who already do a good job in it um and you what i always tell people it is not bad when you fail you should fail a lot to do better art you know so that's very important yeah if you were extremely successful on you know piece after piece the chances are you're not learning as much from them anymore or you're not challenging yourself very we all have our preferred subject matters and our comfort zones we kind of file and we can can fall into those grooves where we just do that that comfort that comfort food level stuff yeah, that's true. I have this too. Um, yeah, we all do. Must, I, I do simple yeah. fantasy scape environments, and we all have our like little <laughs> little comfort place. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I tell people um, that they should do the comfort zone things too, because um, it, it gives more more confident because you know what you're doing already, yes. um, because you know this stuff, but. Besides of that, That's a always great tip. try to um, always try to to do new things. As no matter if it looks creepy or whatever, um, <laughs> none of these look. They don't look creepy at all. He looks quite adorable, actually. Oh yeah, you. Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think it's it's you must have a good balance. So. To boost your confidence, just do what you, you what you need, can already. You do need confidence because I, I see that often in, in the design or the line work with with students is the, when there's not a lack of confidence, the lines are very shaky. They're 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 t- t- a, a little bit on the wrong side of loose, and it and it shows, and it shows that lack of confidence or that unsureness that you know a really focused design or a confident line can really push. A, like a good design into the you know a, a great design or a good drawing to a you know a fantastic drawing. Mm-hmm. That's what I say when you start drawing and you you want to improve yourself. Um, I would prefer to draw with a ballpoint pen because you can't erase lines. Um, mm-hmm. In the first time, you should concentrate on just losing your hand. Um, for example, this one. Um, th- this is an older one, and this is uh, one year later, mm-hmm. um, and. I did the the yeah. Look how look at the clarity in these designs compared to the year before. These are yeah, still I extremely pu- readable and they're fluid, but these are like yeah. on a level above these. Yeah, I pushed I pushed very hard, for example, and um, I didn't have a loose hand when I drew this. So um, yeah, I I prefer to draw with a ball pen pen. This is this is so good. You can't erase the lines, so you're just focusing on on losing your hand and just throughout. Um, designs and shapes. Shapes is, is pretty good. Don't don't look at um, anatomy or details. So, oh, another tip: um, when you draw, draw like maybe the size of your thumb. It's just very tiny. Yes. So you don't need to think about the details of of feet or or hairs or whatever. You see, I I don't really do much details there, but you yes. can see the shapes, and this is pretty important to start drawing. Because when you have clear shapes, that extends out into having clean forms. And without really established clean shapes and forms, designs always fall apart. Yeah, yeah. That's the most important thing. And I, as you mentioned, and I'm just regurgitating this, that is one of the largest mistakes I see students make. It, no matter what they're drawing, whether it's a creature, whether it's an environment, whether it's a prop, a lot of people like to get into the details first. They're like, oh, I want to start with this texture, or I want to start with the eye. That 
that's always, I would not recommend, <laughs> I'm not going to tell someone directly how to draw, but I wouldn't recommend designing something out, you know, f from the micro. Start at the macro, as you recommend, with the big shapes. Yeah, true. I mean, everybody can can do what they want. Yes. It's art. It's free. So, um, but you have a few rules what can make you improve faster. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing. Draw small things. Draw just shapes. Um, don't look at anatomy at the moment. Um, draw in in a side view. Um, it's that's that's pretty easy. Yeah, a very uh, a profile design view I think is great because it, it, it's it's extremely easy and you're not exactly worried about perspective or drawing yeah. a dramatic angle. You're you're not illustrating it basically. You're just designing to to get this idea. Whatever this little guy is, this little hermit, this little hermit mole <laughs> roller dude. I like it. But right, it, it, he's extremely with the little time commitment and in, in a profile view like this, you could show a lot of information and basically mm -hmm. sell this as an idea with the least amount of work. Yeah, yeah, true. These are great. I uh, do you reference? I have to. Ask, do you reference anything when you do these like lunch sketches? Do, do you have something in mind? Do you do you theme them? I'm trying to get inside your head mentally when you look at this blank sketchbook page. How how do you or where do you begin? Honestly, I have mostly no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, I I put some music on and just get in the mood and don't really think I think it's it's pretty important that you don't think while you while you just do rough sketches because when you have something in your mind you you struggle to make it perfect because it already exists like I want to draw a dog um, that's this might be your best tip that I think you've given so far today this is great yeah so don't think at all just just do a little shapes and draw very very um, light um, uh, that's that's what I see very often that people do. They draw pretty hard and can't draw over the line. So mm -hmm. draw light and draw uh, round shapes, a circle or a square thing, and just put it together. And slowly you can see maybe shapes in your in your mind and say, oh, this looks cool. And then you draw a little bit more. And oh yeah, it this, could this, be a right. This, this could be a back, or this could be a head, or a wing, yeah. or a foot. True. I mean, most of the stuff maybe don't have really a good anatomy, but it doesn't doesn't care because you just need to. You could work that out later. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's just ideas. Ideas don't need really good anatomy, you know. And here, we're, you're, we people can also find you on on ArtStation. I think that you have a lot of process posted on this. So, I, is this a, the general kind of process overview if you're looking to kind of create something? Uh, a little more finish or even game ready. You you start just like you do in your sketchbooks, right? With the shapes, the silhouettes, mm -hmm. uh, and then kind of figure out the texture, and then then you look at that, and then and, and then try to do a sculpt from it. Mm -hmm. So it is something different when I draw. Then I just threw out stuff, just mm -hmm. ideas. But when I start something from start to finish, then I must. Um, I must more think about this. So I searched some references. Like for this one, it was a giveaway for someone. Mm -hmm. um, and she wanted to have um, a mix of animals from um, a moose and an owl. So I, <laughs> um, it, it was pretty cool. Um, and I looked references from, from mooses and, and owls. And uh, yeah, just, just painted first some concepts mm -hmm. like you see and um, then start sculpting so very nice how, how long would you think it, it took you to go, to go from sketch to to about this level it's just a, approximately is it a, like a day's worth is it two hours is it six hours um well i must say i trained myself to to um, sculpt very fast with the speed sculpts this mm -hmm. is something i recommend for everybody who do i don't know no matter if you draw or you sculpt um speed sculpts are pretty cool when you set a time like one hour and you just do something um it boosts your your workflow a lot so i think in this stage i would say when i count all the time together i would say maybe um, four days Oh, well, three wow. days, four days, yeah, something like that. And is that working kind of on and off and picking at it, or? No, just. Like many, many hours. Yeah. 
good. I know. I, I like your honesty. Like just to you, know, you do this a lot, so it's like realistically, you know how how much time and detail really does go into. You yeah, know, I mean, I'm pretty fast in sculpting, mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool. I I need more time when it comes to to colors or to UV or texturing, um, but sculpting is, I think, my my main thing. So. Do you do all of that? Um, the the UVs, the coloring, and the texturing within ZBrush, or do you do you export that to a different software? Uh, honestly, I use when I finish something. I use maybe seven or eight programs. So oh, wow. I just I just jump from. Um, so I start in ZBrush and doing my my sculpt with yep. all the details. Then I jump back to Maya and Max and do the UVs. Um, jump back to ZBrush and do the poly paint, so the color. Oh. Um, and then I go um, sometimes to 3D code to retropo the stuff um, to a low poly. I didn't do this here, but because it was just a giveaway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so wow. then back again to ZBrush to post the stuff. Um, and then in Marmor Set um, or Photoshop to do um, just just put it all together. That sounds like an exhausting juggling act. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it is so much easier to just do a concept, you know, just draw yeah. in Photoshop and that's it. But as a 3D artist, you must jump to a few, a few yeah, programs. Wow. Sometimes Substance Painter, Maya, Max, uh, Keyshot, Marmoset, ZBrush, all kinds Look of stuff. Look at this. Yeah, is this is this yeah. is, what, is this all that that uh, UV mapping stuff in in Maya you were mentioning? Yeah, yeah. And and what is this where you kind of fix the topology you were saying? Is that what I know? I'm very ignorant when it comes to 3D stuff, which is why <laughs> I, I can get to ask these questions as natural and uninformed as I am. So yeah, it would something. Would an asset like this be ready for a game, or do you have to like rig it further? Or you want to give us a, a very brief uh, explanation of how that would work? Um, well, rigging an animation is a totally different field because it needs so much time to learn. Um, I mean, you can do um, a general artist, but I mean, then you can everything a little bit good, you know, um, or you just specialize in something and you are pretty good in something. And this is what I did. And I'm more specialized in modeling, texturing. Um, so yeah, um, I think, I think it's 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 pretty cool when yeah. you when so, you specialize in something. So where did you, did you self teach yourself how to do this? Did you did you have a mentor? Did you learn Did you learn from anywhere in particular this workflow, mm. or you know where did you pick it up? Um, I I learned a little bit in school, but only the basic stuff. And for example, ZBrush, I learned all by myself. So um, I everything I do now, I I taught myself. So, um, oh wow! Yeah, it was it was pretty hard, but um, I had a lot of time when I was jobless for two years, so I had a lot of time to do to do that mm-hmm. and to learn that. But um, in this age, because I, I I see school to go to school a little bit, meh, I I don't like really schools because most of the time you can't really learn a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this time, you have so many free sources out there, um, like Cubebrush or yes, Cubebrush is great. Central, YouTube, free videos, so much. So you can learn it all by yourself. You just need to be motivated. Um, yeah, that's right. the most struggle for most of the people. Well, that's really inspiring. Thank you for kind of giving us that. Yeah, here's here's some of that Marmoset tool bag substance. Yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So I normally when people ask me if I go to school, I would say, yeah, it is okay. But most of the school are not really good. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, here in Germany, I don't know really how the schools are in um, in America. Maybe Gnomon is very they, cool. They can be a hit or miss. They, I think yeah. it, I think regardless, the school kind of has to be a specialized school in, in that particular field. If you go to like general art schools, you're going to learn basic art. Fundament- this is how you draw this is how you paint, but they really won't, yeah. they won't necessarily teach this sort of thing. What I really miss in schools is um, you learn all the basic programs, but that's it. You don't learn how to survive in the art world. And nope. it is so hard, really yes. so hard to it do is. this job. 
And many people, yeah, many people don't realize that. I'd always say, I'm pretty honest to you. This is a job. You you can get depressed. You can get be sad or insecure or whatever. I go through um, all of these things every week myself. Oh, it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> it is. Like yeah. some days you just have like these low low self esteem, low like you know what am I doing with myself? Should I start looking for other? Like it it, it just it's a constant mental battle. I would say just yeah for with, everybody, it, not only for beginners. Pros have this too. Yeah. So, um. This is why I always say, do you really love art and mm -hmm. create things or do you only um, have fun with it? Because there are two different things. Yes. Because you need to really love um, to have passion for it to overcome these bad times, you know. That, that and is I think, so true. I think um, Adam, Adam Duff did a video about that. I think the name was... Um, when, yeah, he, he has some when great shit videos gets too. real or something yes. i really love his art talks yes. and i learned a lot from it he's so honest and serious about that and i recommend to to watch all the videos from him he's my mentor right now uh, in terms of fathering since he's uh, <laughs> he's a, you know he's living as an artist and he has like two little girls maybe mm. th maybe like a son too he's got he's got three kids he's got a couple of years experience on me so he he's someone that i look towards when it comes to something like that like how do you manage your time or how do you balance your day out so you don't neglect the, the baby and can still get all your commissions done yeah he's so talented and awesome he's cool well, thank you uh, for coming on today. This has been an absolute treat, and I hope everybody, you know, uh, could take something away from this. This has been fun. Yeah, it was awesome. So thank they, you. Uh, and they can find you on, again, on Instagram, Raw Cat, and on ArtStation. Yeah, yeah, sure. Fantastic. And they can just message me on Instagram. I, I normally always answer, so, that, that is so I, cool. I love to help. So just come on. Awesome. Thank you very much. And... Uh, yeah, you guys, if you do have any questions for her, myself, or any, uh, if you want to recommend any topics or, or suggestions for future episodes, feel free to leave them. And uh, yeah, take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web. Feel free to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.